Welcome to our Apple Platform screencast. In these screencasts, I want to show you how you can build flexible and integrated business applications using Drupal and Apple Platform. In this screencast, I want to introduce Apple Core to you and I want to show you how you can build resource planning applications with Apple Core and native Drupal modules using rules for workflows, entities for data structure and views for queries. So let's start with an example. In this screencast I want to show the example how to create a project controlling application where you just can keep track of your time budgets and your expenses created by employees or freelancers. In general, Apple Core has a very simple architecture. In one of our latest blog posts on the apple.info website in our blog, I just want to show you a complete overview over Apple Platform and how to build powerful business applications with Apple Platform. There is one graphic showing the whole architecture and in this screencast I want to focus on the right side introducing Apple Core. Let's start with the architecture. While installing Apple Core, there are three modules. It's Apple Budget, Apple Resource and Apple Output. Let's enable these modules. So the Apple Resource entity is just a very simple entity that contains just a title for a resource. This resource can be, for example, a team member, it can be a car, an event, or something, something where you can add registrations for, or it can also be a project or a task. Also, we have the entity budget. The budget entity is something that we plan. A budget entity always consists of a unit, and a quantity. And to manage it easier, you have a title that you can add to your budget. On the other side, a budget can also be, for example, a time budget, a money budget, or it can be amount of people that can register to an event. These different types can be built with bundles having different units. Apple Core contains also an output entity and output entities are made for measuring or creating results mostly business results and you can separate them by creating bundles of the output entity for example an output entity can be a time tracking entity or it can be a registration to an event and the mechanism is always the same that means if you have a resource and this resource has one or multiple budgets maybe with different units you can add output entities to this resource for example a time that was tracked in the project and this output entity will try to find a budget where you can book on and in this case if this output founds a budget the quantity of the budget that is still available is reduced by the quantity of the output if both have the same unit. So you can keep track of your expenses or your time budget in project, of your total registrations in events or of your cars that you can hire by the hour for example. Let's start with a simple example to create a small project controlling tool. Let's add a new content type first. So now we can see it a little bit better. Just name this new note type project. We can add the fields that we want, but in this case, I think we don't need new fields. Now we want to make this project a resource because we want to control the budgets that we can add to this resource. Therefore we go to our Apple settings, choose the resource settings and 
simply click project to become a resource. Save this and as it is mentioned here we need to clear the cache. Once this is done just create a new project. This is the first step. Project 1 develop business application. We leave the body empty for this example and save. Now you see, as you can see a resource entity has been created automatically. And as you can see here in our Apple administration menu we have a new resource type for our project. This is a bundle of the entity of type resource. We can add any fields that we want to add here but it works out of the box with the properties that it has. We also have budget entities and output entities. As Apple Core depends on the MVF module for measuring values, so just go to measures. You see that this module delivers already two units. One is time and one is money. Time, of course, can have different units like hours, days, weeks or years and money can have different currencies, for example euro or dollar in this example. Let's go to our budget structure. We have two different budgets in this example. They have been automatically created because of the measures that we have added in the measures entity. So a time budget of output has again the fields that you want and that you need. For example it has automatically added the total budget that is the total amount of hours for example that you estimate for your project or the total amount of registrations that you want to have in your event. Then we have the available budget that means after all registrations how many people can register to the pro uh, sorry to the event until we deny any further registration also we have a resource that means this is just a reference to the resource where this budget is added to you can add the fields that you need here to just for example reference some other entities or to extend the data structure. Let's see how our output entity looks like. Again we have two output entities for this example time and money because for our project management or project controlling application we want to control time budgets and money budgets. And we want to add expenses for example money if we get a new invoice from our contractors or our freelancers or if somebody just books the time to the project, we want to keep track of our overall time and money budget. Just edit one time, check the fields and for these output entities we have a delivered date. That means when this output was created, when the time was tracked for example or when a user registered to the, uh, to the event. This is a flag if the output was already delivered. A resource again where this output was booked to and a budget that had capacity where this output entity can book on. For example if we found um, a time budget on the project then we can add the time output to this project and this output will reference the budget. And it has again a unit. This is in this case time or money. So let's start with our example and go back to our front page. Here we have our first project and it has a resource entity automatically attached. If you enable a node type or any other entity to reference a resource in our Apple settings that we did previously, there will be a new rule created that will do all this magic that you see. You can of course customize it and change it or disable it if you want to implement your own logic. 
Now you see the resource. It is just our resource entity that was added to our node. You see the budgets. We don't have any budgets added yet. And you see the outputs. Let's say we want to create a new budget and we plan not to spend more time for the initial planning of the project of 100 hours. And as we didn't spend any time there, we have 100 hours left. Let's save this. We see our budget here. Go back to our resource and add another budget where we want to monitor our expenses. So this is just called total expenses to have a positive profit after all expenses have been added to the project. So let's say we don't want to spend more than 10,000 euro. So just one information in advance, maybe you work with freelancers that are based somewhere in the US and not in Europe. They will send you an invoice with the currency US dollar and we will automatically have a calculation between euro and dollar. You can um, change the value, how this multiplication will happen and if you add an output of type money with a currency dollar for example and this is booked to a budget with currency euro you will automatically have a calculation between these currencies and this is the same for time if you add an output of bundle time and this time has a unit hour but our time budget has a unit day also, there will be a recalculation again between these two units. So let's save this budget. And now you can see if we go back to the resource that we have two budgets. Both have the available value equals the total value. The one has type money and the other one has type unit. Outputs we didn't create yet, but we will do this right now. So let's say a freelancer tracked some time. He did the project setup. This is the date when he did it. It is already delivered. And we want to add a time budget of one day. You remember we have a time budget of unit hours. And here we track a time for one day. Save the output. Go back to the resource, check the budget, and here you will see that our time budget was reduced by 8 hours because in our settings 8 hours is one day or one day is uh, represented by 8 hours. Now let's go and create a new output of type money because we got, for example, an invoice, we bought something from a reseller and this is some magazines for IT knowledge. We can choose the budget where we want to book it on. It's a money budget and we just say it's $100. And in this case again remember that we created a budget of type or of unit euro. A money budget of unit euro and if we save this output go back to our resource check the budgets we see that there happened a calculation with the value that was set in the back end to have the calculation between euro and dollar if you click on an existing budget and view only the outputs of this budget you can also add a new output to this budget and in this case you won't have to select the bundle because you will only get this bundle of the output entity that has the same unit than the budget where you want to book it on. Let's go to the outputs of our budget and change 
the previously added value to 200. Save it, go back to the resource and view the budgets and now you see that with this change also the available budget has changed and this is again the budget where the output has been booked to. That means you will also and always have consistent values when changing the outputs or changing the budgets and Apple Core just takes care that this calculation happens. All these things are done by rules. You can just configure the rules as you want. You can change them or delete them. Thanks for watching the Apple Platform screencast to introduce Apple Core. And if you want to see how we use this Apple Core to build a complete business application Drupal distribution, you may be interested to have a look at Apple Platform distribution. Thanks and see you in the next screencast.